Hey, it's January 19th, 2007, and it's time for the Ramen Raiders 6th Annual Momofuku Ando Day. So today uh, is a day that I've, for now, six years, uh, honored the late great Momofuku Ando. Uh, he was the guy who invented the instant noodle, and he uh, he did a good job. I'm really thankful for it. He um, he wanted to make a product for people that was cheap, was shelf stable, and was accessible for those and easy to cook. Um, for people after World War II, as Japan had a lot of problems, you know, since that. So uh, he worked and worked trying to figure out a way to like make instant noodles and couldn't figure out how to make it shelf stable and quick cooking until one night he saw his wife making tempura and it just kind of hit him that when you fry something, it extrudes the liquid and leaves some oil in there, but it also leaves a lot of holes. And when you reintroduce it to liquid or water, it will kind of spring back to life and there you go. Well, a few years later in 1971, he came out with the cup noodle. And the cup noodle it just had its, I think, 45th anniversary last year yeah so basically he noticed that there were people on long flights uh, taking chunks of his instant noodles putting them into coffee cups and uh, putting a little bit of boiling water with them and enjoying them that way so he kind of thought well let's just go with that market it and make something you know make a cup noodle uh, I guess one of the hurdles was figuring out how to get the the block into the cup because putting it straight down in it would just kind of it just wouldn't work and what they found is like having it the noodle block down and then the cup land over it worked great so anyways today I thought I'd show you guys some uh, cup noodles from around the world they make them everywhere so yeah let's just get started so this one this is a cup noodle from Hong Kong um, you know, it says cup noodles on it. On the back, you have the more Chinese logo. Um, yeah, th these are really, really popular in Hong Kong, and uh, yeah, they're they're really good too. This one is from Singapore. Notice again, it says cup noodles. Um, this is a Tom Yum flavor, both in English and in Chinese. Uh, Tom Yum is a very popular flavor in Singapore and in Southeast Asia. So, Next we have the Japanese version of Tom Yum. Now this one's a little bit different. Actually I'm I'm kinda I'm kinda unsure because this one as you'll see on the top it comes with a little packet of uh, Tom Yum paste. It's like a just a little bit of liquid. You steep the noodles and then you drop this in and then there you go. Give it a stir and it's all done. But they both have the same kind of thing going on. Spicy soup, uh, kind of a citrus taste from lemongrass, and then you've got shrimp. So yeah. Yeah, I don't believe the Singaporean one has a uh, uh uh, sachet on the inside of it with sauce in it so now this one you'll say hey that looks like the one from Hong Kong right but this one's actually made in a Chinese factory and this one is a uh, exo sauce seafood flavor so the difference could be it might be exactly the same as an exo sauce seafood flavor cup noodle from Hong Kong could be the same recipe could be tweaked a little bit to fit the palate of people in China a little bit more. People in Hong Kong, well, even though they're right next to China, and they they like uh, things maybe a little different. So now we get to the more local North American varieties. This one, I'm sure you're used to. Um, this is the cup noodles that you get here in the U.S. Um, kind of the iconic cup noodles cup here uh, with the cardboard outer um 
This one's hot and spicy shrimp flavor. Now, for the 35th or 45th rather anniversary of the cup noodle, Nissen USA decided, hey, let's change up the recipe a little bit, make it try to make it a little more healthy. Uh, they lowered the sodium levels. They got rid of any and all artificial flavorings, and they oh, there was something else they did. Um, oh yeah, and there's no added MSG. So if there was added MSG in it before, there isn't now. Um, honestly, they're they taste about they have about the same kind of flavor parity as the originals. Maybe a little bit different. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I did a head-to-head -head of the chicken ones, and I think I like the old one better, but I don't know. The, it, it's it's such a tiny amount, it's kind of eh. So, yeah, the, it's kind of cool. New new version, new, new stuff for 45th anniversary. And then finally what we have here is I will be doing a Meet the Manufacturer coming up pretty quick for Nissan Mexico and actually I did one for Nissan uh, Thailand and I don't have any of their cups anymore but they also make cup noodles varieties um, this one is a cup noodle not the same cup as the one you have in the States except down here it says La Original Desde 1971 but this one is Sopa Nissan Sabor Pollo Habanero y Lemon. Lima, le, it's chicken habanero lemon flavor. So, um, and it comes with a little packet of, uh, I think it's El Yucatero, Yucateco on, on the inside. Then you put that with it and it's it's freaking hot. It, it does a good job. Um, a lot of theirs, there's the regular Sopa Nissan line that's not habanero. And those, uh, a lot of them, there's the regular and then there's the, the hot spicy. And those have come with little uh, sachets of a Mexican hot sauce uh, called Botanera. And it's super good. I really like that one. But, yeah, so there's six uh, cup noodles from around the world. Um, yesterday, I got a package in the mail from a company called Exotic Nudes. No, no, not like like as in noodles, not nudes. <laughs> but um, in fact, one time they called me at the grocery store the first time I was talking to them. They're like, "Yeah, this is blah blah from Exotic Nudes." I'm like, "Excuse me, what?" So, anyways, they they do the uh, subscription boxes. Um, I just did a post showing the unboxing of it. But anyways. Um, they sent some varieties. Uh, one I wanted to mention is this one. So this is a South Korean variety. And notice right here it says since 1963. This one was the first ramen in South Korea. Now this is like a different recipe than the original. The original one they came out with was chicken flavored and people really weren't into that. See, flavors in South Korea tend to be more spicy, more, they like beef more, whereas in Japan, where they kind of got the idea from, uh, they like thinner noodles, they like more of a lighter chicken flavor, at least at that point. So this one, when, when they came out with it, it was in a pack form, it had a chicken on it. People didn't know what it was, and they thought it was actually a textile. They thought it was something f having to do with fabric or repairing fabric or it's kind of funny because it was so new and people just didn't know what it was. So they did some kind of big marketing campaign and let people try it and then it caught on and South Korea is one of the biggest uh, consumers of instant noodles and manufacturers right now and they have been for a while. So, But yeah, these guys had their uh, big anniversary, the first ramen in South Korea, uh, let's see, 2013, yeah, that was the 50th anniversary. And next year will be 2018, and Nissan's original uh, product, their flagship, the Nissan Chicken Ramen, that came out in 1958, so that'll be the, yeah, the 60th anniversary. So hopefully there'll be some cool stuff to check out from that. 
But anyways, they uh, also in this uh, January box from them, from uh, from uh, Exotic Nudes, they also sent some Nissan Yakisoba. So I thought maybe I'd uh, do something with this and, you know, show some pictures and all that good, good stuff. So, yeah, I'll go cook that up and I'll bring it back. Um, yeah, and I'll show you a couple pictures. Basically, that's it for this year. Um, been really busy. We got our new daughter Miriam, and still got our new son Miles. He's uh, what, 18. Oh no, he, he's like 16 months. And Miriam, it will be turning a month on the 17th. So that's uh, it's two days, two days ago. So yeah, very busy, very very busy. Um, Traveled to Taiwan recently, uh, went and visited five instant noodle factories. That was a lot. Um, you can check out my travel log and uh, go to the travels section and there's all video and all sorts of stuff. Tried all sorts of uh, really neat foods over there at night markets. Night markets in Taiwan are sweet. Um, got to try snake, duck tongue, chicken bung. Um, God, what else? Uh, frog. Frog's not bad. Um, in the breading, they kind of, or the frying mix, the whatever they do, uh, it's not just salty. They put it's like there were little bits of sugar in with it too. So it's kind of like sweet, salty, and crunchy, and and froggy. It's like mmm, Kermit. So, and of course, the really big news. Uh, I've been working with a company in Malaysia, and we announced that. The Ramen Raider Select, which will be my own personal recipe product line of instant noodles, will be debuting shortly. Um, it's going to be a high-end, premium, super awesome, awesome noodle. So I really can't tell you anything more about that. It's mysterious, but yeah, it's it's close to there. Um, and when it's all done and stuff, I will show you everything about it. I will talk to you on and on about it. In my personal opinion, best instant noodle I've ever tried. Um, and also, I should mention, it's never going to be on a top 10 list. I mean, that would be ridiculous. That would be like, I don't know, like Donald Trump saying, I'm the best president that ever was. So, yeah, you know what I mean. So, I'll toot my own horn, but I won't, <laughs> I won't toot it in front of other brands like that. So. Anyway, so yeah, it's been Hans the Ramen Raider. 
Happy Momofuku Ando Day, O Momofuku Ando, wherever you are. Peace. People in Kenmore have complained for years about the frequency of their lights go out. And now, an independent study shows it's not just their imagination. King 5's John Langler is live in Kenmore with what the report found. John? You have old power lines buried deep in old neighborhoods. In some cases, you have substations with no animal guards on them. It's all detailed in this independent report. It says Kenmore's power grid is outdated. Hans Lenish's sons seem to find the dark entertaining. Are you enjoying the power outage, Andy? No. No? <laughs> Yeah. Even if their father finds it more irritating. It's a power supply. Make sure that if there's like a big spike in power and then I've got my trusty super duper flashlight. As someone who works from home, he's always prepared in case his Kenmore apartment loses electricity. It happens a lot. The frustration inspired him to start this Facebook power outage page. And in the last just over two years of living here, I'd say our power has gone out close to 10 times. And I think the public in Kenmore has been rightfully concerned about the power losses. David Baker is the mayor. He says the city has worked with Puget Sound Energy on a solution for the past few years, chiefly improving the infrastructure. Now there's this independent report to back the city up. It calls Kenmore's grid among the least reliable in all of PSC's coverage area. A fact the utility does not really deny. PSE told King 5 Kenmore's old system is unique for the urban area. Because of the reliability study, because of what we're finding out now, we've got to make this more reliable. And PSE says it is committed to doing just that. Public meetings are scheduled on what's being planned. If the solution means less entertainment in the dark, Lenish's kids won't mind. <laughs> there are... Uh a lot of really frustrated folks around here, and they've got good reason to. Mayor Baker praised the Puget Sound Energy for being part of this uh, remedy and trying to find a solution. However, he did hint the city flirted with the idea of finding another electric provider, potentially Seattle City Light. It appears, though, that the city will stick with PSE. Live in Kenmore, John Langler, King 5 News.